Bisyata Deshmai, we're going to learn Bracha Staf Lamed Aleph, and we're going to start 14 lines down from the top of the Omid. Tonu Rabonon. We learned in the Braisa, Ein Oimdim Lehispalel Loimi Toich Din. A person should not start davening when he's just been engaged in the intricate details of a lawsuit. Loimi Toich Dvar Alocha, and not when engaging in the complications of a halachic discussion. Just having just learned before davening a very clear cut halacha. What an example of a very clear cut halacha where there's no questions, no answers, and nothing that will risk distracting our attention when davening. Omar Abaya, Kihadur Abzeira. Abaya said the typical example of a halacha psuka is, is, is the halacha of Abzeira, the Omar Abzeira. Benois Yisroel, the women of Klal Yisroel, Hichmiru al Atzmon, they accepted upon themselves this Chumra, Sheafilu Royois Tipas Dam Kacharadl, even if they only see a tiny drop of blood, the size of a mustard seed, Yoishebes Oleo Shivon Nakim, that before becoming Tahir, after going to the mikvah, they have to first wait seven completely clean days, even though the halacha of Shiva Nikiim is said on Ziva and not on Nidois. And none, nonetheless, because some people don't know all the intricate details of when are the Yemei Nidois, when are the Yemei Zivois, and all the complications with the Cheshboinus, so the Benois Yisrael will machmer on themselves that any amount of dam they see, however small, they're going to be machmer for Zivois and B'yoysheves Shivonikim. That's a halacha that's very clear cut, there's no discussion about it, there's no questions on it, and being involved or engaged in that halacha before davening will not disturb us during davening. Rava Omar, Rava says a different example of a halacha psuka. Kihodur of Hoishia, Domar of Hoishia, Ma'arim Odom al Tvuosoi Umachniso Bemoitz Shelo, Kadesha Tehei Behem Toycheles Uptura Mena Maisar. We know that grain has to be taken trumas and maisras from it. Now there's a loophole in the halacha, it's not really a loophole, it's it's the halacha that a person is only mechuyev to take maisa once he brings the grain into his home after having taken care of, of the grain that it's already been removed from the chaff and he brings it into the house. If, however, he brings it into his house whilst the grain is still in the chaff, it's not yet the gemar malacha, then he's potter from maisa. Being potter from Maisa means that he's allowed to let his animals eat from it, and even he himself is allowed to eat from it before taking Maisa, as long as it's just Arai and it's not Achilas Keva. And this is a very straightforward, clear-cut halacha, that a person can use this knowledge of this halacha, this loophole, that if you bring the grain into your house whilst it's still in the chaff, that you're potter from Maisa, if you want to feed your animals from this tvua without having to take Maisa first, make sure to take the tvua, the grain, into your home before removing it from the chaff. V'yiboy seima, if you want a different halacha, psuka kihadur of huna, if somebody takes blood from an animal that's hectish, even though in other places it says in the Gemara that there's no me'ila on the blood of a korban, but that's only if you shechted it, you slaughtered the behema the way you were supposed to in the Beis HaMikdash. Now the dam, the blood is only meant to go on the Mizbeach, and there's no halachas of Me'ila. But here, where he's just taking blood from this animal, it's subject to all the halachas of Me'ila, it's Osr Bahano, one's not allowed to derive any benefit from the dam, and if he did derive benefit from it, then he's been oivi, transgressed Me'ila, with all its consequences. Continues the Gemara, Rabbonon of the Kamasnisin, the Rabbonon did what it says in the Mishnah that they would daven mitoich koivad roish with reverence and with a certain um, humility, as we saw when we learned the Mishnah on the Flamadomad base. Rav Ashi ovid kabraisa, and Rav Ashi would do like it says in the Braisa we just learned now that a person should daven mitoich halocha psuka. Continues the Gemara, Tonu Rabbonon, ein oimdim leispalil. 
who a person should not rise to daven, not in a mood of sorrow, and not with laziness, and not with laughter, and not with ridiculous chatter. Rashi explains the type of chatter which is litzonus, and not coming from or with lightheadedness, and not from idle chatter, stam dvarim betelim, elo mitech simcha shel mitzvah. He should daven after being engaged in the joy of a mitzvah. And this simcha shel mitzvah, Rashi says, is divrei Torah, which include in it tanchumin and shevach, as we're going to see in a minute. V'chein, similarly, not only that these are conditions with the way that we're supposed to daven, it's also the way you're supposed to take leave of your friend. Lo yipotir odom mi chaveri, you should not take leave from your friend. Lo yimitech sicha, velo yimitech schoik, velo yimitech kalus roish, velo yimitech dvarim betelim, elo mitech dvar halacha. When you leave your friend, you should leave mitech dvar halacha. And others, Agairus here, the Vilna Gaon changes it, elo mitech simcha shel mitzvah. And what is the simcha shel mitzvah? We're going to see now. Shekein Motzin, we find a similar concept b'neviim or rishonim in the svarim of the neviim. Others take out the word rishonim, but in the svarim of the neviim, shesimu they concluded the neviim devreim b'divrei shevach b'tanchumin with praise to Hashem and consolation that everything, even though this Taurus, everything would work out well at the end. And that is the simcha shel mitzvah divrei Torah that calls it simcha. V'chein, others take out the word V'chein, Tona, Mori, Bar Bereid, Rav Huna, Bereid, Rav Yirme, Bar Abba. Al Yipotir, Odom, Mechaveiroi, Elo, Mitech, Dvar Halacha. When taking leave of your friend, make sure you do so from a Dvar Halacha. Shemitech, Kach, Zochreihu, because when you leave him, you're saying a Dvar Halacha, it will help your friend remember you. Kihad, Rav Kahana, we find this concept with a story that happened to Rav Kahana. The Rav Kahana Alvei the Rav Simi Bar Ashi Rav Kahana escorted Rav Simi Bar Ashi mi Pum Nahara from a place called Pum Nahara ad Beit Zanisa de Bovel to a place called Beit Zanisa where the palm trees were in Bovel. Kimata Lahosam when they came to this place Beit Zanisa in Bovel, Omar Le Rav Kahana said to Rav Simi Bar Ashi, Mar. My master, Vadai de Omri Inchi Hani Tsunisa de Bovel Isnuhu Me Odom Rishain Vad Hashta. Is it true, is it possible that there's truth in what people say that these palm trees of Bovel existed from the time of Odom Rishain until now? Omar Le Rav Simi answered him back at Kharaton Milsa Derbiesi Burbchanina. You've now reminded me by mentioning these palm trees, you reminded me of something that I heard from Rabbiesi Burbchanina. Domer Rabbiesi Burbchanina, my dersiv. It says in the Posuk, Boaretz loy ovar boish veloyoshav odom sham, referring to a land that no person passed by and no person settled there. Asks the Gemara of Echima Achar de loy ovar. Heich Yoshav, it's self-understood that if no person passes there, that they cannot settle there. Why does the Posok say both Be'eret le'ovar bo'ish and ve'le'yoshav odom sham? Elo le'ma l'chot to teach us. Kol eret she'gozar o'le'o odom rishon le'yishuv nisyashva. Any land, any place that odom rishon decreed that it was going to be settled, with people, Rashi says that he even decreed that there would be date palms there, then that's what would happen later on in time. If Odom Rishon did not decree that a certain place would be settled in, then it wasn't going to be settled later on in time. And that's coming back to the Pasuk, the reason that nobody passed there is because Yoshav Odom Shom, because Odom Rishon didn't decree that people should dwell there. And this is a halacha that he remembered because Rav Sheshis mentioned the palm trees. Continues the Gemara, Rav Mordechai Alvei Rav Simi Bar Ashi, Mehagrunya v'ad be'kipi. Rav Modcha would escort Rav Simi Bar Ashi from the place of Hagrunya until the place of be'kipi, a place where there were many bridges. V'omri lo ad be'dura, and others say till the place called be'dura. And in the Gemara in Soitadaf Memvov, there's more elaboration on this whole sugya in the halachas of how far a person has to escort 
his friend when when leaving. Continues the Gemara. Tonu Rabbonon. Hamispalil, when somebody is davening, Tzorech Shechavin es libo ila Shemaim, he has to direct his thoughts to Hashem. Some say this means that he has to have, he has to understand the words that he's saying. Abba Shaul Oymir. Abba Shaul said, Simon Ledova. I haven't got absolute proof to this concept, but an indication I found in a Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Tochin Libom Takshiv Oznecho. That if that in Tehillim it says that if Klal Yisrael will be tochin libom, that they will direct their thoughts and their heart to the tefillah, that's going to help that takshiv oznecho, that you Hashem will listen to their tefillahs. Continues the Gemara. Tanya Omer Reb Yehuda Kachoyim in Hogesh Reb Akiva. Reb Akiva had a custom. Kashoyim mispali lemat tzibur when he would daven with the whole tzibur. Hoyim mekatzir. He would daven very short and finish his tefillah in order not to burden the tzibur. When he would daven on his own, if somebody would leave the base of Medrash whilst Rabbi Kiva was davening in one corner, when this person would come back later on, he would find that Rabbi Kiva, who was either in the middle or finished his tefillah, was on the other corner of the base of Medrash. Why is he getting from one corner to the next in the whilst davening Shmonesra? Because of the many times that he would bow whilst davening. Continues the Gemara Omer Abchia Bar Abba. A person should daven in a room where there are windows. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk in Daniel, Vechavin Psichon Le. The windows were open to that room where Daniel was davening. Continues the Gemara. Could it be that a person can daven or should daven all day? He says, Kvarmufurush Ali Day Dunil. Dunil said explicitly in that same Pasuk, Vazimnin Tlosa Bayoima, etc. Vagoimer, that the time of davening is three times a day. Yochil Mishabo Lagoila Hucholo. Could it be that Dunil started this custom of davening three times every day only when he was exiled? Kvarnema, it says in that same pasuk, Dihava Oved Min Kadmas Dano. This was a custom that Daniel was always used to doing, even before he was exiled. Yochel Yispalil Adam Lachol Ruach Sheyirtze. Could it be that a person can daven in any direction he wants? Talmud Leimar. It says in that same pasuk, Neged Yerushalayim, which means that he should face Yerushalayim when davening. Yochel Yehei Koyleles. Could it be that the three tefillahs that he davened, you can daven them in all in one time? Kvar Mufurush Alidei David. David HaMelech already said explicitly in a pasuk in Tehillim, Erev v'avoyker v'tzaharayim osicho, that I would daven in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. So you see that the three tefillahs each have their very own unique time when they should be said. Yochil yashmi ha'koyloi b'tfilasei. Can it be that a person is allowed to raise his voice when davening? We see in the Psukim regarding the tefillah of Chano, that's the mother of Shmuel, that she, when she davened, Shenemar, it says in the Pasuk, when she davened, her voice could not be heard. So you see that the appropriate way of davening is without raising one's voice. Could it be that a person is first allowed to ask for his own personal needs, which is what we know as the middle 12 brachas of Shemona Esra, v'achar kach yispalil, and only then he will praise Hashem by saying the first three brachas. Kvar mefuro shalidei shloima. Shloima melech was mesiachas to this, and he said in the Pasuk, shenemar, lishmoya el harino ve'el hatfila. One should first sing when davening, and then one should daven, one should, one should say tfila. Rina, what's the song part of Tfilah? Zu Tfilah, that's what we said before, Yispalil, is the praise part. Which is the first three brachas. Tfilah, when it says, Ela Rina, Ela Tfilah, after Rina, then Tfilah, Zu Bakosha, that's when he can ask for his own supplications, and those are the middle brachas of Shemayin Esra. Continues the Gemara. Ein oimir dvar bakosha achar emes v'yatsiv. One should not start the twelve brachas asking for one's own needs after emes v'yatsiv, which means at the beginning of Shemoneh Esra, before the first three brachas. Aval achar atfila. 
after the davening, afilu kaseidu vidu yishaliyim kipurim. Even if you want to have bakoshes, you want to, to, to beseech Hashem for everything you need and anything you need, even as lengthy as the vidu of Yom Kippur, Oimer, he can say it there at the end of Shmoin Esra. Itmar nami omr of chiyah bar ashi omar rav. We also heard this in the name of rav. Afal pisha omru shayil adam tzrochav b'shemia tefila. Even though a person is allowed to ask for his own personal needs in the middle of the bracha, we know as shma kileinu. In ba loy mar achat filosai. If he's going to ask for his own bakoshas, his own needs at the end of the tefila, afilu kaseida shalei makipurim oimer. He can even be as lengthy as the tefila we say at the end of. Shmoneh Esra on Yom Kippur, which is very long. And from here the Mepharshim learned that if one asks for one's own needs in the brach of Shema Kileinu, he should keep it short. Continues the Gemara. O Mariv Amnuna, Kamo Hilchasa Gevirta, there are some very important halachas. Ika lemashma mehani kroi dechano. We can learn from the Psukim, from the way the Torah told us the story and everything that transpired with Chano at the time. The Gemara is going to start. V'chano hi medaberes al libo. That Chano davened with something that was on her heart. Mikan lemispalel shatzorach sheichavin liboi. From here we see that when a person davens, then he has to direct his thoughts. His heart has to be with his davening. The pasuk carries on. Rax foser noois. Only her lips were moving. Mikan lemispalel. From here you see that it's not good enough to think the tefillah, to feel the tefillah. A person has to say the tefillah, he has to pronounce the letters with his lips. The next words in the Pasuk, her voice could not be heard. It's, one should not raise one's voice when davening Shemineshra. Eli thought that she was drunk because it wasn't commonplace at that time to daven silently. One thing you clearly see from here, irrespective of whether indeed she was drunk or not, but you see that a drunk person is not allowed to daven. Continues the Gemara. It says in the Pasuk, Eli said to her, how long are you going to be drunk? Vagoimer, etc. Omer Beloza, from the fact that Eli turned to her and asked her, Why are you davening in a drunken state? Mikan from here you see, Laroya Bechaveri, that if you see your friend is a Dovo She'ene Hogun, something that's improper, Tzorich Lo'ichichoi, a person is obligated to reprove him, to give him Musa and Teichocha. To try and set him straight. Continues the Gemara. What did Chano answer to Eli? Vatan Chano Vatoimer Loi Adoini. No, my master. Omar Ulavi Tamer Biesi Berbchanina. Omrolei Chano said to Eli, Loi Odoin Ato Badova Zeh, you are not the master. Loi Odoin. Not no, my master. No, my master. You are not a master on this on this um, topic. Veloi Ruach Akoides Shayro Lecho, and nor does Ruach Akoides a rest on you, you suspect me, you accuse me of davening when I'm drunk. Others say, are you not a master? Is the Shechina and Ruach HaKodesh not on you? That you judged me unfavorably, you did not judge me favorably? Milo Yodas, do you not know the Isha Kshas Ruach Onoichi? That I am a person with a very aggravated and sad spirit. And Vayayin Vesheikh Oloisha Sisi, I didn't drink any wine or beer. How could you accuse me? Omar Rebeloza Mikan Le Nechshad Bedovar Sha'in Boy. This is a source that if somebody's been accused of something that he's written, truly innocent of, Shatorich Lohidioi, one should tell the person accusing him of one's innocence. Continues the Gemara with the next pasuk, Al Titain es Amoscho Lifnei Bas Belial. Where Chana asked Eli, "Don't put or don't give your maidservant, referring to herself, before a Bas Belial." And Bas Belial means a lawless person. Rashi and Pasha Sra'e says Belial means Beli oil, without the yoke of Torah and mitzvahs. He says, "Don't don't put me in that bracket." Omer Beloza, 
מכאן שיקר שמספלל כאילו עבד עבד זרה. אלי אקיוזט אוהב בין דרונק. And, and davening in a drunken state. Her response was, don't put me in the same bracket as Bas Belial. So you see from here that if somebody does daven when they're in a drunken state, then they are compared to Bas Belial. What is Bas Belial? Those who serve Avedah Zorah. Ksiv Hoche says here, Lifnei Bas Belial. Chano used the term Bas Belial. Or Ksiv Hosom and elsewhere it says, in Parashas Re'eh, יוצו אנושים בני בליעל מקרבך, that אבוי דזורה will emerge from your midst. מה להלון אבוי דזורה? In the same way as in Parashat Re'eh, the בני בליעל are talking about and referring to people who serve אבוי דזורה, אף כאן, so to hear, when חנו said, בס בליעל, she was referring to אבוי דזורה, and so you see from here that had she davened in a drunken state, it would be compared to people serving אבוי דזורה. Continues the Gemara. Vayan, Eli, Vayoymer, Eli responded to Chano and said, Lechi, Lesholim, go to peace. Omer Belozo, Mikan, Lechoyshet, Ez Chaveri, Bedover, Sheim, Boy, from here you see that if you accuse somebody of doing something wrong and it proves that the other person is innocent, Shatzorich Lefaisoy, you have to reconciliate with him, you have to appease him. Veloy Oid, not only that, Elo Shatzorich Levorchoy, you have to even give him a brocha, Shanemar, as it says, In that same posuk, Vilukei Yisroel Yitin Es Shilosei, Hashem should answer your requests, what you're missing, you should indeed merit having a child. Continues the Gemara. The, in, it says in the Psukim, regarding Chano, Vatidoir Neder Vatoimar, Hashem Tzvokois. She addressed Hashem by the name of Hashem Tzvokois. And Tzvokois means a master of legions. Omer Rebeloza, מיום שבורא הקדוש ברוך הוא אצל עומי, from the time Hashem created the world, לא יהויה אודום שקורא לקדוש ברוך הוא צפוקיס, nobody addressed Hashem as a master of legions. עד שבו עשו חנו אנטל חנו קיים וקורא עשו צפוקיס, and חנו referred to Hashem as the master of legions. It was clear that what חנו was, was asking from Hashem, is she was asking Hashem to, to respond to her with this attribute of being the master of legions. And the Gemara is going to explain. Omro Chano lefnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Chano turned to Hashem and said, Reboi Neshelelem Hashem, Mikol Tzivei Tzvoko Yis Shebaro Sabo Ilomcho. From all the very many legions that you created in your world. Kosha Be'inecho Shetiteni Ben Echod. Is it difficult for you to give me one son? Moshe Lemoa Dova Doimer. Going to give a Moshe. למלך בוס אבודום, a man made of flesh and blood, שאוסו סודה לעבודו, he made a big meal, a big feast for his servants. בו עוני אחד ועומד על הפסח, a poor person came and stood at the door. אומר להם, he said to all the people feasting, תנו לי פרוס ואחס, give me one piece of bread. ולא ישגיחו עליו, they ignored him. דוחק, this poor person pushed his way in, ונכנס אצל המלך, and he got close enough to the king that he could speak to him. Omer Lehi, and he said to the king, Adoini HaMelech, my master the king, Mikol Suda Shosiso, from this whole lavish feast that you made, Kosha Be'inecho, is it hard for you, Lita Ni Prusa Achas, to give me one, one slice of bread? Continues the Gemara. Chano said to Hashem, Vatidur Neder Vatoimer Hashem Tzvoko, he says, we just saw, Imro'oi Tireh. What does it mean, Imro'oi Tireh? That if you will notice... She was saying that she was asking Hashem to notice to notice the pain and the affliction of his maidservant referring to herself, etc. What's this double term, Ro'i Sire? If you'll notice, if you'll double notice, Ro'i Sire, Omer Abelozo, Omer Chano Lifnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Chano said to Hashem, Reboi Nishaloylam, Im Ro'i, if you can see my plight, Mutav is good. Vim love, if not, Sire, I'll do something that, so to speak, you'll be forced to see my plight. What am I going to do? Eileich ve'istatir b'fnei elkono ba'li. We know this halacha, that a woman is not allowed to seclude herself with a person other than her husband. She said, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to seclude myself with a strange male, a strange man, in front of Elkona, my husband, he'll see me, he'll warn me and tell me not to do it, I will not listen to him. But given the Mr. Tarna, and because they're going to catch me in a secluded place, mashkuli me soita, they'll make me drink the water of the soita, v'iya to'isa to'roscha plaster, and it's clear to me that you, Hashem, will not turn your Torah into a lie. And what does it say in your Torah? 
Shneemar says, Venixa, that a woman who is accused, who, who is secluded in a place and accused of possibly doing an Avera, and she's proven innocent, she did not do an Avera with that strange man, you let us Venizra Zara, and she'll merit having offspring. So Chano said, I'll do that, and then it says in the Torah that I'll merit offspring, and then you'll give me a child. Says the Gemara, When it says in the Posuk that by a Saita who's proven that she did not do the Avera, Venixo, if she's proven innocent, Venizra or Zora, and she'll deserve offspring, so those who say that, that this means that even somebody who's barren will merit children, Shapir, we can understand Chana's plan. However, there are some who say that Nixa of an Israel Zora doesn't mean that if she's barren, she'll have children. It means something else, in which case we'll need another explanation why it says Ro'i Sire. According to those opinions who hold that Venizra or Zora doesn't mean that if you couldn't have children, you'll now have children. It means as follows. If she was used to giving birth very, very painfully, she'll give birth with ease. If she was used to having girls, she'll merit having boys. If her children were too dark, Yeledis Levonim shall be deserving of having lighter colored children. Ktsorim, if they're too short, Yeledis Aruchim shall have taller children. But, and in this whole list, it doesn't say if she was barren, she would have children. So, if so, what did Chano mean by Ro'i Tzira according to this opinion? Ma'ikala Meimar, what are we going to say? Detanya, we actually find in a Braisa that there are two such opinions. Venixa, Venizra, Ozora. If she was barren, nifkedes, she's going to have children, divi rabbi shmoel. And that's how we explained Chano, in Ro'i Sire, that if you see me as good, and if not, I'll use this ploy of rabbi shmoel, that I'll drink the waters of the soita, and then my state of being barren, I'll have children. Omalir Bakiva, but Bakiva argued with rabbi shmoel and said, Im kein yelchu kola akori iskulon v'istatru. If you are Bishmal are right, that the Posuk is guaranteeing that somebody who doesn't have children will have children, then all those people who don't have children, they'll go and they'll they'll transgress the Avera of Yichud with a strange man. And those that, being in a state of Yichud, did not do an Avera, Nifkedes, they'll have children, they'll be remembered, and they'll have children. And the truth is, the Mepharashim ask that this question of Rebbe Kiva should apply anyway. If a woman has gives birth bizarre, with a lot of pain, she'll play this trick in order to have an easier birth. And for that the Mepharashim say that no woman would go so far as to doing such a serious Avera and undergoing the whole humiliation of Saita just in order to have an easier birth. But a woman who has no children, who's barren, she'll go to the nth degree and use any tool in her hands in order to be able to have children. And therefore Rabbi Kiva said all those who are barren will use the Saita parasha in order to have children. Ella, he says, that cannot be pshat in the pasuk of Nixov and Israel Zora. Melamed is teaching us as follows. Shem hoiso yeledis b'tzar, if she was having children with a lot of pain, yeledis b'revach, she'll have them with more ease. Ktsorim, if they were short, yeledis arukim. Shchoirim yeledis levonim. Achas, if she only had one child at a time, yeledis shnaim, she may merit having twins. But if she was barren, there's no guarantee she would have children. If so, my imro'i sire. So we're back to our original question. If so, what did Chano mean by saying to Hashem, imro'i sire? It says the Gemara, dibra teira koloshen b'nei adam. The language of the teira is the language of men, and it's just common to speak ro'i sire, the double term. People often use, use it a double term. And here the Mepharashim ask that, what does it mean, Dibra Teira Koloshan Bnei Adam? This was Koloshan Bnei Adam, this was Chano talking. It wasn't the Torah talking and saying an extra word, and we say the Torah spoke like men. This was man talking. So the Mepharashim say that it's not about what Chano said, it's about the way the Torah told us about what Chano said. Every word in the Torah, even when it's explaining and narrating to us something that people did, it's got a din of Torah, it's called Torah. So if the Torah told us about what Chano said and used the term Ro'i Sireh, it's called Divrei Torah, and the Divrei Torah is Koloshan Bnei Adam. Continues the Gemara. We're going back to Chano. What did Chano say? 
after saying Vatidur Neder Vatoimer Hashem Tzvokois, Imro Oyisire, what did what was she begging Hashem to see about her? So she said as follows: The pasuk goes, Imro Oyisire Baoni Amosecha, with the poorness, with the, the needs of your maid servant, Uzcharatani Veloi Tishkach Es Amosecha. If you'll remember me and not forget your maid servant, Venosato La Amosecha, and you will give to your maid servant Zera Anoshim. Um, human offspring, male offspring, we'll see soon what that means. But in the meantime, we see in the Pasuk that she used the term Amosecha, maidservant, three times. These three times that she mentioned the word maidservant, why? What do they correspond to? Omro Chano Lefnei Kodesh Baruch Hu Chano was saying to Hashem, Ribbeinu Shelolam, Hashem, Shloisha Bidkei Misa Barasa Beisha. There are three times where a woman is inspected whether she's deserving to die or not. Vaomri Lo and some say Shloisha Divkei Misa. There are three times where death bonds with a woman if she's if she if she's not careful. Veelu Hein and what are they? Nida the halachos of Tara. Vechala. Afrosh's chala, vadlokas neir, and lighting Shabbos candles. Klum of varati. Did I violate al achas mem any one of them? So she said three times, I'm osecha, I'm subservient to you with all the three halachas that would make me deserving to die, and I was clear on all of them. Why can I not have children? And what did she ask for? Says the Gemara, Venosato la amoscha, zera anoshim. She asked that she should be given male offspring. Asks the Gemara, "My zera anoshim? What's this male offspring? She should ask for offspring." Oma Rav. Rav explained, "Gavra beguvrin, a man between men, somebody who's unique, somebody who's outstanding." That's what she was davening for. Shmuel Omar. Shmuel said that she was davening. Omar zera shem moishach shnei anoshim. I want offspring that's going to anoint two kings. Uman inun when she actually did have a child called Shmuel. Shmuel anointed two kings. Who were they? Shaul, Shaul HaMelech, and David HaMelech. Rabbi Yechanan Omar, Zera Shashokul Kishne Anoshim. She was asking for offspring that was equal to two men. Who was Shmuel equal to? Uman Inun, Moshe Aaron. Shmuel on his own was equal to both Moshe and Aaron. Shanemar, as it says in the Pasuk, Moshe Aaron Bechoyanov, or Shmuel Bechoyer Eishemoy that Moshe and Aaron doing the kuhuna, and Shmuel, who was calling out to Hashem. So you see that Shmuel's koyach for tefillah was parallel and equal to the, the total of Moshe and Aaron together. Rabbonon Omri, the Rabbonon explained, what does it mean, Zera Anoshim? Zera Hashem Muvla Bein Anoshim. A person who's absorbed between other people, he doesn't stick out. And the Gemara is going to explain. Ki also of Dimi, Omar of Dimi explained what does it mean a person who doesn't stick out. Loi oruch not too tall, loi guts not too short, loi cotton not too thin, loi ilim and not too large, loi tzocher not too white, not too pale, loi gichur not too red, not too ginger, loi chacham not to be too clever that people would wonder, wow, this is brilliant and make an ayin hara, loi tipish and not that the child should not be a fool. Continues the Gemara. That at some point later, when she actually brought Shmuel, she had her child, and at two years old, she came to the base of Migdash, she came to Elia Cohen, and she said, I am that woman that was standing with you back then. If you remember, you accused me of being drunk, you gave me a bracha. He's my child. Omer Bishua ben Levi. From the fact that she said, I was standing with you, then some explain, Rashi says that Imcha means that you were also standing. Why was Eli standing? Because she was davening within four Amas away from Eli, and you're not allowed to sit within four Amas that somebody is davening, so he also stood. Toysus explains that the Imcha means that you were with me, but not close enough within my four Amas. You were sitting outside the fourth, the four Amas in the fifth Amma. The reason you were sitting there, not closer, is because I was davening. Continues the Gemara. El Hanar Paloti. So she was telling Eli, this is the child that I davened for. Omer Beloza. Rebeloza says that there was a very dramatic event that happened here. 
And there's a discussion in the Mephorashim whether the whole event actually happened at this point when Shmuel was just two years old, or whether the Gemara uses the words, Elanar Azei Spalolti, I davened for this child, to, as a springboard to tell us about something that happened many years later. And, but it didn't actually happen then. What happened? Let's see the story. Shmuel Moira Halocha Lifnei Rabbi Hoyo. He had paskened a halacha in front of his Rebbe. His Rebbe was Eli Akoyen. And here the Mephoroshim ask that at two years old, Eli wasn't his Rebbe yet, and Shmuel certainly wouldn't have been deserving of any punishment at that young age. So that's why they say that really this happened much later, and it's just annexed to this posuk that she said now. Others say that even though Eli was not his Rebbe yet, but he was the god Ladoir and had the same halacha as a Rebbe. Either way, let's see what happened. Shenemar, it says in the Pasuk, Vayishchatu Esapor, they slaughtered the bull. Vayuviuhu Esanar, El Eli, and they brought the little child, this Nar, Shmuel, to Eli Akoin. Ask the Gemara, Mishum, Vayishchatu Esapor, because they slaughtered the bull. If you are Nar, El Eli, they brought Shmuel to Eli, what's one got to do with the other? Elo Omar Lehen Eli. Eli said to the people around him, Kiru Koyhein. Summon a koyen leisa velishchait. He should come and do the shechita. Chazinu Shmuel dava mahadri basar koyen the mishchat. Shmuel saw that they were looking for a koyen to do the shechita. Omar Louis said to them, "Lomel lechula adure basar koyen the mishchat. Why are you looking for a koyen to do the shechita? Shechita bazar kshera. Even somebody who's not a koyen is allowed to do the shechita." I saw the kameid Eli. They brought Shmuel in front of Eli. Omar Lei. Eli said to Shmuel, Minolachaha, where do you know this halacha from? Omar Le, Shmuel said to Eli, Miksiv Vashochat Akoyen, is there a posuk anywhere that says, Vashochat Akoyen, Akoyen Shuchecht? Vekrivu Akoyenim, it says that the Koyenim are the ones that have to bring near the korban, Ksiv. And what's called Vekrivu? Mikabola Veelech Mitzvah Skuna. This is learnt out from a Gemara in Chagiga Dafyud Aleph that Vekrivu is the Kabola Saddam receiving the blood. Mikan from here you see the Shechita Shekshera Bazar. Only the receiving the blood and taking the blood and sprinkling the, br- the blood, all that has to be with a Kayin. But the doing the Shechita, even somebody who's not a Kayin can do that. Omar Lee, Eli responded to Shmuel, Meimer Shapik Omris, you're correct, every word you said is right. Miu, however, Moira Alocha Bifne Rabchat, you're paskening Alocha in front of your Rebbe. Vachola Moira Alocha Bifne Rabboi, Chayev Misa, somebody who rules, gives a halachic ruling in front of his Rebbe, is liable to death. And Chana obviously heard about this dialogue between Eli and Shmuel, and she went hysterical. Asya Chano, the Kotsov Chokamesh, Chano came and cried in front of Eli. And Nio Ishan Itzeves Imcha Bezev, a Goimer, I was that woman that was here a few years ago, davening for a child, etc. Omar Lo, so Eli said to Chano, Shiv Kili de Onche, leave it to me, let me punish him. Ubi in the Rachme, the Yoiv Lachor Rabba Mine, and I'll daven that you should have a child even greater than Shmuel. Omar Le, she said, No, Elanar Azei is Paloti. I davened for this child, and this is the child that I want to keep. And it's amazing. Even a child that is deserving of Misa, and you're promised a better child, we don't give up on any child. Continues the Gemara. V'chano hi medaberes al libo. The Pasuk says that Chano davened on her heart. Omer Belozum and Shumrub Yesi ben Zimra. What does it mean, al libo, on her heart? Al iske libo. She davened about something that was on her heart. Matters that were on her heart. Omer Lefono. She said to Hashem, Riboine Shalom. Kol ma she barosa bi isha. Everything that you created, every organ you created in a woman. Loi barosa dovo echod levatola. Nothing was created without a purpose. In Naim Liro's eyes to see was Naim Lishmoya and ears to hear the Khoitim Loriach and the nose to smell, Pele Daber, a mouth to speak, your Daim Lasis Ben Melocha, hands with which to work, Raglaim Lahalich Bem, feet with which to walk, Dadim Lehenik Bem, and the breasts were created in order to nurse a child. Dadim Alolu Shenosata Alibi, these breasts that are on top of my heart, Loma, what are they for? Loy Lehenik Bem. Not in order to nurse a child with them. Tenli ben, give me a child, va'anik ben, and I'll be able to nurse him with them.
Continues the Gemara, V'omer b'lozo m'shum Rabbi Yaisi ben Zimra. Kol ha'yoshev b'tainis b'shabbos, somebody who fasts on Shabbos, and it takes a certain strength of character to do that. Everybody is basking in the pleasures of Shabbos, and he's afflicting himself, and he's fasting. In that merit, Koyrin lo yigzaradino yishal shivim shono, they tear up a decree, even one that may have been given to this person when he was very young, a decree of 70 years, is going to get torn up. Nonetheless, he may get punished for, for not keeping to the mitzvah of having pleasure on Shabbos. How can you rectify this? He should do another tanis, he should fast again another day to atone for the fact that he fasted on Shabbos. Rashi says the next day on Sunday you should fast, others say it can be later on in the week, but if he fasts another tainus, that will atone for the fact that he fasted on Shabbos, and the fact that he fasted on Shabbos will, will contribute to tearing up Xaradin of 70 years. And in Mir Tashem, in the next year, we're going to continue from here.